beautiful chickens. In this video, you will learn how to deal with evidence-based questions on the SAT reading section. My name is Katya Severson. I'm the inventor of the Severson Method. It's a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast. I also run an amazing, wonderful membership website. It's called SAT Verbal. And what I'm about to share with you is a part of the SAT Verbal. I just recorded this explanation for one of my students and asked Katya, and I thought it was pretty good. So I decided to share the wonderfulness, especially because I know that for many of you, there's so many SATs that are coming up. There's school SAT at the end of April, there's May SAT, there's June SAT. So there's like a cascade of these tests. So uh, please enjoy and hope you find it helpful. Hello, my chicken. This is your first question and ask Katya. I'm so excited to help you improve your SAT score. So here's what you've asked me. You've asked me about question number two. And um, because this is a line reference question or the way we call these questions in SAT, this is an evidence-based question. You can't really solve two without solving one. So these two are together. And in the event that you may have missed the lectures on evidence-based questions, just want to quickly teach to you how to approach them. And uh, most importantly, why is SAT so obsessed with evidence? Because these evidence-based questions are unique to the SAT. You're not going to find them in uh, ACT. You're not going to find them in other standardized tests. Why evidence? Well, evidence is a really important concept for your ability to make judgments and think and your logic and reading comprehension. So let me try to explain it to you on a real life example. Hypothetically, uh, let's just use these flowers. Let's say a bouquet of flowers was dropped off for me at the doorman downstairs. The doorman calls me up and says, Katya, someone left the flowers. I come downstairs. There is no card. It's unknown. We don't know where they came from. When I come up with the flowers, my boyfriend looks at me and like, where, where are the flowers from? And I say, I don't know. And uh, he doesn't really believe me. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean you don't know? So he heads downstairs and he asks the doorman, for evidence. He knows that there's a security camera above the entrance and he asks them for specific footage um, of, uh, of the security camera. And that footage, that evidence has to include three specific components. It has to be from today. It has to have a footage of a person dropping off these specific flowers. So the doorman, they said, oh, sure, we will look at the footage. And let's say they um, give him four different types of footage. First footage, A, has a man dropping off on today's date. Uh, it's a man dropping off a box. My boyfriend looks at the footage and he's like, no, I wanted a footage of a man or a woman, whoever, a person dropping up, dropping up these specific flowers. So that would be a wrong answer choice on the SAT. Um, answer choice B was a footage of a person dropping off red flowers. And then he looks at it. It's like, no, that's not good. I wanted these specific white flowers. Then there will be a footage of a man dropping up, dropping off white flowers, but those were for Jody, not for Katya. So, um, that would also not work. And the fourth footage that he looks at, it's, it's a person dropping off these specific flowers for me. That would be perfect evidence for him. How is this story? now relevant to the SAT in a major way. Let me teach this to you. So in order for you to come up with the three components you need to see in the footage or in a sentence, you need to first obsess over this question. This question is pretty tough. So let's come up with three things that need to be present in the evidence. Should we have a narrator? Absolutely, because over the course of the passage, narrator's attitude. We have to have narrator speaking. Number two, should we have attitude or emotions? Absolutely. And number three, we should have some kind of a shift. We should have a change present. So we should have a narrator, his attitude, and change present. And the way I like to solve evidence-based questions, I always solve them from the back. So I go here and I look at 10 to 12. Let's take a look. In line 20 to 10 to 12, it says, for years, for a lifetime, the machinery of my destiny has worked in secret to prepare for this moment. Well, do we have a narrator? Yes. Do we have an attitude? Well, sure. The machinery of my destiny has worked in secret. 
to prepare me for this moment. So maybe he's like, uh, there's, it's so secretive. It's so hidden, maybe clandestine. Um, so there is an attitude, but what's missing is change. It's similar to the first footage that my boyfriend in the story saw. There's a person dropping off a box. He needed a person dropping off a bouquet of flowers. So the change is missing, A is out. And we can easily dismiss C because it's from 42 to 44. Um, let me just read that to you real fast. And suppose you were to find it in spite of all, this wonderful place that everybody's so anxious to stand on. Well, this is missing the most important component. It's missing the narrator. It's not talking about his attitude. And um, when he says this place, this is um, a pronoun, which is pointing to something and it's pointing to the North Pole. So definitely not C. And I know that your question was about why is it not B? Let me show it to you why it is not B. Um, in B, line reference B, we have here, yet, in freely willing, before I go any further, I want to point something out to you. The word yet represents a specific sentence relation. Yesterday, I was teaching a live class on sentence relation. So um, I know you weren't able to make it live, but make sure you watch the recording. It's so, so helpful. Um, so here, there's definitely a reversal relation between nobody has succeeded in this thing. Again, what is this thing that going to the North Pole? And maybe, and many, sorry, and many have died. Yet, in freely willing this enterprise, although many have died, still with my free will in choosing this moment and no other when the south wind will carry me exactly northward at the velocity of eight knots. So in my free will, when the wind will carry me, south wind will carry me northward, northward to the north <laughs> at the speed of eight knots. And this is the main idea of the sentence. I have converted the machinery of my fate into the servant of my will. Is there an attitude here? Absolutely. I do this on my free will. And although many have died, I am choosing this moment and no other when the wind will carry me. And when I do that, I would have converted the machinery of my fate into the servant of my will. Do you see all three components? I see the narrator. I see his uh, attitude, but I don't see a change, Han. When I go with my free will, I would have converted my uh, machinery of my fate into the servant of my will. There is no change. And maybe if D wasn't one of the answer choices, then maybe B would have been a somewhat of an answer. But when you have D where, pre where change is so obvious, I don't think you would have even um, considered B. Always consider all four of your answer choices. Answer choice D, 56 to 57, what myself, what I am on the brink of knowing, I now see is not ephemeral means, not permanent mathematical spot, but myself. I now see, what does that mean? When we say I now see means that I didn't see before and now I see, what is he now seeing? That it's not some kind of a, uh, impermanent mathematical spot. Because remember how he's been talking about the machinery of his fate, and which was like a secretive thing that he couldn't understand. And now he is at the brink of knowing that it was not some kind of a secretive machinery that was driving him. It was himself. It was his internal uh, yearning that was inside of him. So what do you see? You see a change. I now see. I now understand. And because this represents change. This represents all three components that you needed. It has the narrator, it has the attitude, and it has the change. So then D is aligned with C. Uncertainty of his motives to recognition of them. It's like there's this uncertain machinery, secretive machinery of my fate. And now, oh, I now see it's myself. So therefore, answer choice um, one, uh, for question one is C, and for question two is D. I hope this helps. Hey, thanks for watching until the end. I'm so proud of you. Listen, if you leave a comment below this video and obviously subscribe and give it a thumbs up, but if you leave a comment below this video or any other video on my channel, you get entered into the pool of people I choose from every month to give you free membership to SAT Verbal for a whole month and give it to two people. So don't miss your chance. This is such a no brainer. Um, just leave as many comments as you want. It helps me, but it also helps you. So I hope you will take advantage of it. Bye.